I'm letting this music play one more time if y'all don't mind. Trying to get everything situated. Get this thing going. All right, can y'all see me? Can y'all hear me? If you can, let me know so I can get this started. Play one more time music. Let me turn it up. I want to hear my music. I like to vibe out for a second of my music. But come on in and share the three. Come on in, share the thread, speak. Say hello, say cat, dog, boo, or something. Let me know you're listening. And let's get this uh, conference. What's up, Rod? Can see and hear me. I appreciate that, bro. If you can, don't mind. If you don't mind, share this. And we're going to get this conversation started. Who is this? Great Intellectual suit. All right. All right. I'm looking. I'm um. Uh, I'm communicating with some other people in the background. I got to give me a longer track of their music so it uh can stay on longer. Uh, I appreciate you uh for jumping on, Mr. Joiner. You said you would and you did, and I do want to get a male perspective. I hope you can hang out with you for a little while tonight. To turn this music down. Hey, you know how the conversation starts? Hey, what's up, Terry? How you doing, my friend? Oh, what's up, Terry? What's going on, Netta? Hey, Netta is in the house. Uh, look at this conversation. My music is it viral? I'm not gonna lie, I like that. My music. If it's, it's four people here now, if everybody shares it and one person picks up for okay, each share, we can get to eight real fans. Look at this conversation. What am I talking about? Oh yeah, she wants to feel safe. And notice the key word I said. I said and. I didn't say but, cause see, but to me is divisive language. If I say, but it kind of negates what was said on the other side of the comma, right? Because two things can happen at the same time. You know, he can feel respected and she can feel safe. And can't you see how those things could potentially go hand in hand? I'm not, I don't want to get into this conversation too deep just yet, but I do want to go deeper and I want to uh, continue this conversation as we trend towards May the 4th. Now, let me tell you all right now, I just got off the plane. I was in Little Rock uh, this morning, uh, got one by K. Hall and Sons, boop, boop, and got my ham cheeseburger on the way out. 
Uh, so I'm good. I feel good. I came home and got some Atlanta, some real, real wings. I appreciate y'all, Little Rock, but I'm a leader. Hey, what's up, Kiki? I'm going to leave the wings to Atlanta. I appreciate y'all, Little Rock, but y'all stick to the cheeseburgers and all that kind of stuff and soul food and all that, but I'm going to leave the wings to Atlanta. So as soon as I got off the plane in Atlanta, the first stop I made was one of my wing spots, and I got me some good wings. Um, yeah, because y'all be charging like $15 for six wings in Arkansas. Is there different chickens there or something? At least if we do $15, we're going to get at least a minimum of a 10-piece. Yeah. You got to go to Chicken King? Okay. I, I, let me know, because I'll be looking at them little six-piece Specials I be seeing online for like fourteen dollars. I can get a ten piece down here, so I don't know. Like I said, maybe y'all chickens, are, maybe our chickens are lame or got broke legs or something. I don't know what the difference is. But so I just came home uh, a few minutes ago. I mean, I know the show's got to go on. I mean, I don't, I got a couple ideas uh, what we're gonna talk about tonight, and, and a lot of that honestly is contingent uh, on you all. Uh, don't believe who Kiki? Don't believe me or don't believe y'all? Uh, a rod, but. Uh, but listen, uh, but a lot of what we talk about tonight is going to be contingent upon you all. But I, I really, I really, I really want to dive into this whole piece of um, making her feel safe. Uh, now, some people will come on, me and who listen for about 30 seconds, because a lot of us are not critical thinkers. You know, we form an opinion in about a moment. You know, not we don't listen to really develop our own opinion, uh, an inform informed opinion. So you listen uh, for about five or six seconds and you'll say he's simping. No, I'm not simping. I'm trying to get us to the point where we, uh, as a people, uh, especially male and female, we can come together and unite and we can get, what's up, Lakeisha? We can get past this stage, right? Because so many of us are stuck here. I don't know why. If y'all can help me out with, uh, with this, I really would appreciate it. But I don't, I don't think you can really find a definitive answer. But if we can get past this whole man versus woman era, which is whack because we need y'all and y'all need us, right? I mean, we, we, we need each other. At the end of the day, we need each other. But as I said earlier, there's, there's so many buts, B-U-T, so many conjunctions, so many things that keep us divided. And uh, our mission, and it's a, it's a noble one, I, hope, I know, and it's probably, it's going to be hard. I get it. What's up, I, Terry? I got you. I know, I know where you are, Terry. Uh, we, um, yeah, but listen, 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 listen. I don't do. I think I know. But uh, so I'm trying to get past it. That's why I said she wants to feel safe. And because two things can happen at the same time. So I want to get into this conversation tonight. Uh, I'm going to put the phone number up. So if there is something that's said that you agree with, disagree with, you know, you're welcome to call in. And I'm also going to put the link in now. Which one do I prefer? I prefer that you get on video. Uh, I would prefer you get on video because if you get on video, then it helps me with my reels and my content going forward. But either way, you know, I just I, I just like to have the conversation, keep the conversation going. So what I'm doing now is I'm going in here to find uh, to put the link in the chat so that if anybody wants to come on tonight as we get into this conversation, uh, you're welcome to do so. Give me one hot second. One day, y'all pray for me. One day, I'm gonna have somebody do all this for me. I'm, I'm believing that somebody's gonna be on another location, and they, they, and all the things that I need, they're gonna put up for me, and I'll be able to move uh, seamlessly through these things. Right now, it's it's me, but we're but what I what I'm appreciative of is that I'm a lot farther along now than I was this time last year. So I'm not complaining. All right, but there that there the uh, link is there the link is. Um, there the link is. So if you want to come on uh, visual, visually uh, through uh, through through the camera, you can do that. Or we can we got the phone number right there. You can check out the phone number 404-860-2775. Now, I said she wants to feel safe and he wants to be respected. Now, listen, I, that's a term that I, I heard even when I was married. You know, uh, it was safe, secure, you know, uh, security is my love language. Uh, all those types of things. I've heard, I've always heard women want to feel safe. And even now, as I, you know, consider dating, you know, consider, uh, you know, coming out of being single, because I don't want to end up being single too long, because if I end up single too long, I'm going to end up becoming cantankerous and I'm going to get used to it. And it's going to be hard to let somebody invade my space. I understand that. So, and I finally given myself permission to move forward, right? So in moving forward, you know, it's, it, it's different. It's different because I haven't been in a relationship in so long and the dynamics of relationships have changed, right? Because I was married to one woman for 20 years, you know, and in the same, by the same token, 
a person that I might talk to or try to talk to, they might have been in five, six relationships in the last 20 years. So they've got different dynamics. They got different perspectives. They got different ideologies. They have different expectations. Right. And if I don't meet those expectations because I'm not used to what you're used to, then don't make me feel inadequate. I'm learning. And that that used to be this that used to be a part of the process called courting, you know, where you learn somebody's proclivities, you learn what they like, you learn what they don't like, you learn their idiosyncrasies and 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 but now you're judged, it seems like, and judged so harshly, you know, uh, if things don't work out in the first month or two or three, you know, and uh, and I don't know, like I said, in three months to me, um. When I look at 20 years, you know, that I, it's probably going to take me a little bit longer to get to know someone uh, instead and, 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 as opposed to like three months. You, 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 do, do you understand what I'm saying? So I think we need to be a little bit more uh, have a little more grace, uh, especially for somebody that you kind of dig in or there's somebody that you think you might. Dang, I, I would kill an LSU. Uh, somebody that you might potentially want to build something with. Right. But the thing that I keep hearing, the thing that I keep hearing is that a woman and ladies y'all help me out on this and brothers y'all tell me what, what what your experience is in this area but the thing that i hear more than anything is that women have a need to feel safe is that true lakeisha is that true kiki uh is that true netta y'all talk to talk back to me and uh rod and uh rod and uh terry have y'all heard that in your dating experiences or if you're married or whatever? Uh, have you heard that, Katrina? So w women, they need to feel safe. Is that is that in, if, is, if you if you prioritize uh, like love, finance, you know, I mean, and we're going to talk about different ways uh, that women feel safe in a moment. But it's safe like way up there at the top. Chastity. OK, good. It, it's safe like way up there at the top. And for you, Chastity, uh, you, Kiki. Um, uh, you, uh, Katrina, what does safety look like? If a man tells you that he wants you, won't, I mean, if you tell a man you want, I need to feel safe. I need to feel safe. How? How? What does that look like? And y'all do me a favor, share this thread. I only see two likes, so two reactions so far. So, um, uh, y'all tell me, y'all share the thread for me. Uh, like it, love it, uh, do something. Uh, and let and let's like I said, let's get the conversation. If you don't feel like typing it, the phone number's right there. Four zero four. 860-2775. Call in. Let me know what it what it seem what it sounds like or what it looks like. Excuse me. What it looks like for a man to make you feel safe. Rod, anybody, y'all want to call in? What what have you heard? What does it make? And I'm gonna get I, I asked, I took this question to Facebook uh last week sometime, and I got a whole lot of responses on my Facebook page. And I'm gonna read some of those responses tonight, but I did notice a common thread. Okay, Lakeisha says she's interested in hearing some of the ladies' responses. What, what's your response, Lakeisha? What, what makes you feel safe? Uh, chastity, if you don't mind. Like I said, uh, I know Chastity. I know he's a jokester. I like Chastity. Chastity been, has Chast, been rocking with me for about dog, over a year now, at least. I mean, I see her off and on. I mean, so you've been prodigal for a little while. But, uh, but yeah, tell me what it looks like. And as y'all start telling me what it looks like here, you said, mind your business. Okay, well, this is my business, so but uh, you. But let me hear. I want. I want to hear. What uh? What are some of the things? And I, as y'all start telling me some of yours, I'm going to look at some of the comments that were on my Facebook page, and uh, and then we'll go, and we'll and we'll we'll dissect some of these a little bit more as the conversation gets a little deeper. But do me a favor. I'm going to ask you again, please, ma'am, please, sir, if please, sir, if you're listening, if you can hear me right now, just go right down to the bottom of the page and hit that share button. I know if you're listening in the group, sometimes it doesn't have the share button there, but it does. It, you can. I'm sharing it in the group, so now you should be able to share it. And it is. Uh, Lakeisha said, "Mind my business." Well, I'm trying to find. I'm trying to learn. I'm. You know, I'm. I'm on an intern. I told y'all this podcast for me is like an internship for things that I need to learn for real life. I bring them to y'all. So if I find out how y'all handle them, uh, and how y'all handle them, and if you all handle them a certain way. Uh, then I, I I might go with the popular consensus consensus you know or or I kind of juxtapose it uh, against what I got going on and if it makes sense you know if I can break it down you know then I'll do that if if it makes sense if it doesn't make sense then that's a whole different uh, scenario so let's look at some of the answers that were on my face no y'all know what 
I want to laugh right quick. We're, I'm going to break the monotony right quick because I got, I just believe in my sanctified spirit that somebody's writing the answers down to the question that I just asked a moment ago. What does it take, ladies, to make you feel safe? But, uh, uh, Lake yeah, Lakeisha's uh, still in the show. That's what's going on, uh, Jackie. <laughs> Hold on, I'm joking. But let me, let me, let me, let's, let's watch this video right quick. This, this was so, yeah, listen, this was my laugh of the month i think it is but yeah let, let's laugh and then we'll get back to we'll get back to the show but check this yeah we, i'm not making fun of him but i am laughing at it hold on a second spell us us e. huh us uh, now spell age a age age yeah like your age a g a a y age like your age like how old you are your age oh i'm 63 no spell age E G I H T. Age, like your age. 63? No, S I X. Spell age. A D D R E S S. Age, like A G E. Okay, I just spelled that two times. No, spell age. Age, A G E S E. Alright, now spell, spell us. U S. Now spell age. A G E. That's it, that's it, that's it. Okay. Now put them two words together, what it spell? Us age. He said who? Us age. <laughs> age. That's right. Spell the us uh, age first. So, so U.S. spell. Us age. No, U.S. spell. My name, first of all. No. Spell us. U.S. Spell age. A-G-E. Now put it together with a spell. Us age. <laughs> 63, mine. I'm sorry, y'all. That's I needed that laugh. I really oh. listen. I'm telling. I... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I promise you that 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 is the funniest video to me. <laughs> Oh, Katrina, you done went serious on me. I'm, I'm, I'm back on this. I appreciate you for keeping what's in with me. Oh, my God. Y'all want to watch it again? That joke. Hey, Chastity, I'm dead. I'm sitting over here dead. Dude said, uh, say, <laughs> he said, how old are you? He said, uh, spell A. Oh, I'm 63. <laughs> then he started spelling 6-S-I-X. Why am I skilling? Because it's funny. I promise. You know, black. You know how we laugh, girl. Don't do that. Oh. Okay, let me compose myself. We got to get back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it. All right, so I'm back now. Yeah, now we broke the monotony. We've left a little bit. So Jackie, since you're here, I just want to see who I was here. Jackie, since you're here, uh, Netta, since you are here, my back hurting too. Uh, Chastity, since you're here, ladies, and uh, Jarvis, you're married, so you might be able to help shed some light on this conversation. What does it take to make a woman feel safe? Katrina said, "Be honest and open with her." Hmm. Okay, so I'm, let's, what's another word for open with? Transparency. Would you would you all agree that open and honest uh, kind of uh, you think open on, uh, open excuse me open and honest? Um, I mean, I, open is transparent, right? Tr is that is that, are they the same? Transparent, being open, being open. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm I'm gonna read some. I'm gonna read some of these. Man, that was funny, man. I we're gonna play it again at the end of the show because that was hilarious, man. I, that dude had me laughing so hard for real, man. All right, security, real. Hold on. Yes, transparency. Okay. Let me see. Alicia said something. Security, re, want to be real, want to be attentive, helpful, helpful. That's an interesting word. Helpful. Okay. All right, helpful. Alicia, you might want to call call me in and break that helpful down to me. You want to help you, like, what, carry the kids to school or make sure he help you cut the yard? What does helpful mean? What does it look like? And I'm not trying to be funny when I say that. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm really trying because I want to I, – because I, that would take this – that would really take the conversation in a different direction. And I, I think somebody might feel me on that one. Uh, but helpful. I like that's that's an interesting word. Interesting word. Interesting word. Interesting word. All right, so I'm going to read some of the answers from my Facebook page. When I put this question before the peoples, and uh, let's see what they said. That dude had me laughing. Okay, you're about to call, so don't do don't do the Facebook questions yet. Now, hey, listen, hold on, hold on. You you can call. Hold on before you call, or here the here I'm gonna put the link in the video chat again. Dawood, don't come here with no mess. 
I'm joking for real. We, we're gonna do the men later. Right now, we're doing the women. <laughs> Dawu said, Don't start. Dawu said, Don't come call me out. Dawu is my dude, y'all. He's listening right now. But we're fine. We're asking a question. What? What's up, greetings? Uh, me, uh, Dawu. Now, listen, Dawu, let me do this topic and then we'll go to another direction in a minute because I got something for the men at the end. But let me do this part right here, da Dawu. Please don't beat me up. But, uh, we're asking women what it takes to make them feel safe. Now, Alicia, I just put the, the link in the chat. Okay, you don't want to be on screen? Okay, call then. Uh, what, and, uh, and we'll talk about this more. We're going to put some of the ladies' questions out in a minute, and then uh, uh, then we'll go a little bit farther. Now, I might not be able to get to all of your comments. I'm going to do my best. I'm by myself, uh, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, Alicia, if you're going to call, call. Okay, she's calling now. Let me get this. All right, hold on, Alicia. Let me get you on the screen. Hold on. You there? No, no. I'm, girl, you know I know better than that. Hold on. Don't nobody want to call you. No way. You'll get them off the phone fast. Hold on. I'm getting on the phone, y'all. Hold on one sec. Hold on. All right. So there we go. Then I got to do this real fast. <laughs> right, well, got to do this real fast. Boom. There we go. Are right, you there? Hello. Are you there? All right, cool. I got Alicia on the line. And Alicia is getting ready to explain to us what she meant in a minute ago. Because I'm asking a simple question, what it means, uh, what it takes to make a woman feel safe. Her answer was... I'm, just, oh, I'm sorry. Security, real, attentive, and helpful. And I thought the word helpful was kind of interesting. Now, we're not fighting over here. We're talking. We're getting understanding, right? So I want her to right. explain what she means. So talk to me about this helpful piece. Or just talk to me about... Well, I was saying... When I was saying about helpful, just y'all, all everything I said just go together. Like, you know how you like don't like a man don't have to you or well, a woman don't have to say like what is needed or whatever. Right? You see the need or something like, and he just do it. So I'm like, without me having to say anything, or a man quite naturally, you said something about cutting the yard and stuff like that. It's quite naturally a man to do that. But I'm just saying like, just helpful. That's what it means. Like. Being a kid is doing what you know what needs to be done. It, it, Not being honestly, a hindrance. That's you know? what should be in any relationship, though, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I played a video last week, um, and in the video, it was a man who had I don't know. Well, you don't know if you were listening, but it was a dude that had been married twenty years, and uh, mm -hmm. and it was an influencer on there, and the influencer was like, you know, what well, does your wife do to cook? And he said, we both cook. He like, well, what's your wife do? Mm -hmm. He's like, whatever needs to be done. We we've been married 20 years. Right. We do it. No, dude, then dude said, What are you married? And the dude said, Yeah, I've been married for 20 years. And so he was like, Because why that, do it have to be a gender thing? It didn't, it doesn't, but that's what the influencer was yeah. and was trying to make it. The influencer was trying to make it uh, a gender thing, saying that something was supposed to happen. And it wasn't, and it wasn't why. And honestly, it was like dude was telling him the 20 year person. The twenty-year person had been married for twenty years. That what he was doing in his marriage for twenty years wasn't working, and that didn't make sense. It works sense. for them, though. Yeah, it works for them, and that's <laughs> and that Alicia. That's the point. A lot of times we project what we think a relationship should look like. We project our ideologies on everybody else, and at the end of the day, each relationship, like as I often say, is individual, is unique, and has its own fingerprint. Right. So if every relationship has right. its own fingerprint and it's in unique then why are we comparing relationships? You understand what I'm saying? Why don't we just do what works for us in our household? Now, Jarvis just said something a minute ago. Jarvis said financial security in his house, and he was married over 18 years, enough income where she only works if she wants to. Financial security beats a man being honest and broke. Now, that's his that's his, that's his idea. And and women mm -hmm. like financial security. Uh, so I got, I got something to say, though. So Go ahead. When I say the gender, the gender uh, thing, I don't know if I'm contradicting myself or whatever, but I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to want to go outside and cut the yard, though. But as far as, you know, cooking and those type of things, I think they could just be both. I think they can also be romantic. It might be a love language for somebody, you know, cooking together or something. It's going to be just a woman got to clean up or a man got to do certain things. I just would prefer, you know, not cutting a yard. I feel like it's a man job. <laughs> Listen, I, and I and, and honestly, I don't have a problem with that. And, and for me now, and I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm probably not going to cut the yard either. 
but I don't want my wife. You gonna to pay do. somebody to do it? Yeah, I'm gonna pay somebody to do it. I'm gonna get it done. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't because I don't. You know that my time is part. Worth, that dude who makes fifty dollars an hour cutting the yard. My time is worth a little bit more than that to me. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't gonna go out there. I could be doing something else during that time. I'll pay him to do that before I run. Before I do that, you know, what I mean? or unless. Now, when I had, when I was a time that I enjoyed doing that, but now I just don't want to do it. Uh, she said, now Chastity says she agrees with you, but she will cut the grass. Okay. And that's okay. Now, Chastity, now let me ask you a question, Chastity. Chastity, you the real VIP. She said you're the real VIP. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, me, let me say this, Chastity. So let me ask a question. If your husband told you, if you, now you're not, I, I don't think you're married. Are you, are you married? If you're not married, uh, if you, if your husband told you he didn't want you cutting the grass, would you cut it? Would you cut it if he says him? Yeah, because I did make that request. I said I don't want you outside cutting the grass, person. I don't like seeing y'all sweaty and all that kind of stuff. So, I uh, yes, I okay, she said, my man said I'm hey. <laughs> yeah, she said no, she wouldn't cut it then. But that's that's all good. She said I will cut my grass and plant the garden. Yeah, and now you're doing that as a single single lady, Phoenicia. But what if your husband was like, hey, I got that, or I'm gonna get that handled, or we're gonna get a lawn service, you know? And uh, he took that. If he took that lead, would you would you try to stop him from taking that lead? Because he wants to make you feel safe. Okay. I, I get it. You can change the flat tire. I, I know when, and, and, and I get it because I know a lot of women that want to prove what they can do and, and they know how to do it. Like I had a woman told me one time she knows how to uh, change the oil. I threw up in my mouth because I don't want to imagine a woman that I'm interested in, uh, you know, potentially being. I don't know how to do evil. Yeah, but I'm, 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 and I'm not trying to be funny when I say that. But if, if I, me personally, a woman that I'm interested in, especially when we talk about a soft woman and being doing those things. Me personally, when I heard her say she could change the oil, I threw up in my mouth. Literally, I was done. I'm like, Ugh. I haven't had the opportunity <laughs> for that. I mean, I'm, I'm 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 laughing, but very serious in that moment. Lakeisha, you didn't read wrote this whole paragraph. I cannot. Let me try to read it in a moment. Hold on. Uh, you know, I'm by myself. Uh, she said I pick up when they might get tired or run short. I feel you on that, but like I said, if 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 we had line service and uh and that line service woke up every when I woke up Saturday morning to go to work, it was already done. You know what I'm saying? I can and, read Letitia. You can't read yeah, read it for me. Let me put it on the screen. If we can brutally if we can have brutally honest conversations and have and can be okay afterwards, I'm feeling safe. Being encouraging and reassuring when I may doubt. Have having patience because I get on my own nerves sometimes, being able to make decisions, being intentional. Being able to share their feelings instead of balling it in. That's just a few. Oh, okay. got to have a sense of humor because I'm always going to laugh about something. Gotcha. Okay, so she's still answering the question of what it takes to make her feel safe. All right. Uh, so your, my dad. So your dad had you outside helping him, helping you change oil and helping you do all that kind of stuff? What about the women that don't, you know, we don't feel safe or is it, am I using the right word? Like, know. you know how this, I've been seeing this thing like, the soft era, uh -huh. like for me, I've been single. I'm a single mom. I've been having all this going on, so I have been doing everything. So even when I have had been with somebody, that, mm, it's been a few, you know, that would take on things. I probably wouldn't allow them to, not intentionally, Ooh. but just because I've been doing it so long and I haven't been in a place where I can be soft or to, you know, be able to be soft. Just be soft and let a man do it or. So, so, so a lot think, of times, a single. Hmm? So you think a, a woman can prevent a man from, uh, 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 from, from, from? I guess the question from providing you safety to an extent, or, or trying to. Yeah, provide you yeah. Safety? If we, if you kind of like, hey, is it dominant? Am I saying the right word? I'm trying to use the right words, like, because yeah, I, I know. Hold I know on, Phoenicia. Phoenicia is our resident therapist, so she's listening to your answer, and she does. The link is in the chat. So, Phoenicia, if, uh, if you want to come on and bring some clarity to what she's saying. Uh, cause I I, I get you what you're saying. No, stay there. She she if she might want to get oh, okay. on the uh, she might want to get on the video part of it. We'll see. Let's see what okay. she says. Yeah, because I feel like you know I've been doing so much, and then the few like I've had a few good guys. You know, I ain't gonna say everybody being bad or whatever. I kind of like uh, dominate them or whatever. I mean, dominate them or maybe I ain't make them feel safe. How, how do you dominate them? Like being a leader, because I know a man's supposed to lead and stuff like that. But I've been leading. I've been running my household, so. It do be kind of, if somebody come in, I'm like, well, I don't know, because where you lead me to? Because even sometimes when they have tried to lead, I'm like, I don't know where we're going because I can't see the vision. Like, where where are you leading me to? So I can't all the way, like, just stand down. Mm. Or just, uh, 
let him lead our. Um, that's that's interesting. I hope I'm right now, right? Now you know you know you you bring an interesting paradigm because we're talking about feeling safe, uh, and him needing and him needing to be respected. And, and I for those right. that have just come I saw I had men to down me or make me not feel safe. Are they doing these things for me? And then I throw it up in their face. So I, you know, I have this. I throw it up in my face, and so I have this um, shield up. Like I don't, no, I don't need nobody to do nothing for me. Not like just saying it, but just like just handling everything. Like I got it. Like I got me and mine. You know. So they'll do something for you, then throw it in your face if they did. When that, what does throwing in your face look like? Saying what they didn't do for me, uh, just saying what they didn't do. Like I did are this, they saying, are this. They, oh, I know are they saying it in did. a malicious way, or are they just, or are they just, mm, la- la- yep. or if something go wrong, and if I like don't want to, you know, deal with them or something, you know how I'm sure y'all have seen it plenty of times. Uh, men like. I never been married, but they'll be married and like, well, ain't nobody else gonna want you, ain't nobody gonna do this, you know, stuff like that. Well, that's yeah, that's a that's not a that's not necessarily well, that's a male species. It's not a man. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the male, that's yeah. a male, that's a male species. It's not necessarily a man. Uh, and that's that's the part of I, I think some some of us are so many of us are so ill prepared for relationships. And I think that we're not prepared because we've never seen healthy relationships. Uh we've never seen um uh, seeing people who really do it right you know what i'm saying so many we uh it's like it's at least it's almost like uh dysfunction has become the new normal right hold on one second let me get phoenician here for a second this is a good conversation y'all i appreciate you I, yeah i ain't gonna get to my second i'm gonna get to my second part i don't care what y'all say i'm gonna get to it stay there alicia and i'm gonna get phoenician on here too okay hold on all right phoenician okay. what's up hey how you doing oh i still got that background up hold on y'all i gotta change it i feel bad i ain't mean to have that one up that's an old flyer i'm good <laughs> my bad i'm good how you doing you all I'm right i'm good this evening did you hear what she was saying i did i so did in- interpret well that's kind of I, I think a new thing that's going on in the last decade or so with a lot of women is being more um taking more on a leadership role in a relationship and it's complex i will say that it's very complex a lot of it has to do with this platform that you have and how do we bond the sexes and put our men back in their rightful place. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that there's not men who are in their rightful place, but there are several who have taken on different roles as well as different identities. And so women have therefore stepped up and taken more of that leadership role um, to provide for families. Um, I do not, however, agree or if some women say I'm the mama and the daddy because you're still the mama. You can be a more dominant mother who's raising, you know, our young boys, but we still have to, in both sexes, identify and understand that we have our role. What we do in that role may appear different, but in relationships, we have to consider, and I don't want to say the term equally yoked, but that's the best way to really say it, because Mm -hmm. there may be people who are not necessarily spiritual or religious, but you want to be with someone who's compatible yeah. with you. And it goes back to what we talked about last time was how do you communicate what your needs are? Because individuals, some may have a strong point and others may be weak. So it's the yin and the yang, right? Mm-hmm. So in a relationship where you may fall weak, your partner should be strong. It's not good if both of you are weak in the same area. Yeah. And so when you look at Balance. being dominant in a relationship, is it really being dominant or is it that that's your strong area? Whereas your partners, they may With not you. be strong in that area. So how do you all, like you said, how do you all balance or how are you all compatible Yeah, with one another without the gender roles? That's it. That's good. That's good. You still there, Alicia? Or did you hang up? Did she hang up? Oh, cool. Let's make sure she hung up. Yes. Yeah. Are you still here? Oh, okay, cool. Did you have anything you want to ask her or anything before I let you go? Did she, did she clarify uh, what you're talking no. about? No. Okay, cool. Did you have anything you want to Oh, hold on. What do I, I hear of somebody echoing? Turn off, turn down your I'm phone. Sorry. I'm sorry. I've got to turn my live down because I'm on the phone. I ain't looking at your live. Okay, <laughs> okay. Thing. Yeah, all right. Um. No, it's just what she said was right. You know, I just, I don't think it got nothing to do with the last, well, I guess it could be new age, but 
that I don't think it goes back to my mama was a single parent. So I mean, that's it. I think. Let, let, let me say, and let me let me clear, let me say this as well for those that are listening and those who will listen. It's not it's not a matter of being right or wrong. It's a matter of being relative, right? So what she says might not necessarily be right for everybody. You know what I mean? But she's calling it based on what she sees, based on trends, based on count. She's a counselor by trade. Uh, she's a therapist mm -hmm. by trade. So she sees a lot of different dynamics in relationships, and and I'm sure she doesn't have a pan the same panacea for every relationship. Uh, each relationship, as I always say, is individual and has its own fingerprint. So you have to treat it as such. And so when she talks about it now, you just brought up another dynamic. And it's a dynamic that I was kind of touching on right before we started talking about this. Our environment plays such a big part of who we are, how we respond in relationships, uh, how we relate in relationships. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, your, you just said your mom was a single mom. You're right, and I've seen her be strong and all this, but I also knew, even seeing her, even as a child, even as an adult, even before she passed, she ended up, you know, being married, you know, everything. But, like, I've seen her, but I, I used to be like, I don't want to be strong like this no more. I don't want to, like, the same what it is. Even when she got married, I feel like it was kind of toxic, but, like, uh, that was her husband. Mm -hmm. And I'd be, even though I never been married, I'd be like, Mom, now, why are you talking to that man like that? Like, I knew that one, what you were supposed to do, no matter what I have been seeing, no matter how I've been raised, like, even if it had me a model, like, like, be down, like, just having morals or whatever, you know, you know, like certain things, like just because of your environment, that don't mean that's what it got to be is. But yes, I'm, I seen my mom be a, a single parent, a mother to five kids. Yes, she had help here and there or whatever, but like, you know, maybe I, I do get that, you know, strength from her, but like, I don't want to be strong. I don't want to be super woman no more. I'm going to be there for my kids, true enough, but like, you know, this ain't what it is. <laughs> And that's good. I appreciate you for that. Listen, I'm gonna let you go uh, in case somebody else want to come in or call in tonight. But I appreciate All you right. calling in. I appreciate you're gonna be on the screen okay, soon. Bye -bye. Get the hair done so you'll be ready next time. No, nah, my hair done. I'm just in the bed. But okay, okay cool. Talk we got to you a little later. <laughs> bye. Get off my phone. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you, Alicia, for coming on. Uh, yeah, Alicia brought some good points uh, to the stage because there are women uh, who are in their 30s and 40s who are raising three, four children. Uh, and they have to be strong. I mean, and y'all are like, the, I mean, y'all, I don't know where y'all get these capes from. I mean, y'all make Christmas happen every year. I don't know how you save money, like to go on vacations and all the things that you all do as single mothers. So I think y'all are like the most awesome species on the face of the planet, you know. And if, a, and I think, I think, I wish every one of you could find that person that would come in. That would be, as you just said, that yin to your yang, or you know, or that or, or who would provide completion, right? That's that's the thing. I'm looking for somebody who's gonna complete me and I'm gonna complete them because they have what I'm missing. The last thing I would want for Nisha is somebody to be just like me. Absolutely. I don't want anybody to be just like me because then it's gonna be boring. Boring is because I cause I'm comfortable sitting on the couch. I don't ever I mean, as long as I got a computer, as long as I have a phone. As long as I got a refrigerator where I can go get some snacks, you know what I'm saying? I got a, a TV, all these things. I don't ever have to leave the house because I make money. See, when I'm I a little different. I've been in the house all day today and have not had the TV on. Well, uh -huh. take that back. I did put some okay. smooth jazz on, instrumental jazz in the background because kids needed to uh -huh. do homework, needed to feed, needed to do some domestic chores. And TV sometimes can be a distraction. Yeah. And so I'm okay with being in the house with either nothing on because I want someone to be present. And so by being present, I don't want the distractions of a computer and social media and other noise. I want to be able to have conversation. I want to be able to just sit in the presence with my person, whomever the Lord is preparing for me. Um, yeah. And we just be together. Now you ain't going to be able to do that because you might get on my nerves, but it's okay for you to go to your side and I'm going to go to my side. Then we might can want, you know, have the TV or turn the music up a little louder if need be. Yeah. But it, it really is about finding your person that's compatible with what your likes and desires are. I don't want somebody who's just like me necessarily, but at least have similar interests because yeah, that's absolutely. what's going to help the relationship to grow. Absolutely. Cause like I said, just because I don't think about it don't mean I won't do it. Right. It's just not on my mind. You know what I'm saying, Fenson? Or maybe you hadn't been exposed to it yet. You may not I know might not. you, you don't I've like never it. planned a vacation. So if a woman's waiting on me to plan a vacation, it's not going to happen. I didn't plan one for myself, to be honest with you. I just went. 
If they say go, I just went. I just showed up. They said be at the airport. We're leaving on this date. Da, da, da. I go. But as far as sitting down and figuring out all this, I've never done it. You know what I'm but saying? But what I, would happen if you went on a really nice vacation? And you're you're enjoying it, and you're like, oh, next time I could see yeah. us doing blah blah blah. That may yeah. be motivation for you to then take the initiative to plan a vacation because now you've been exposed to something that's a little bit different. We are one hundred percent the effects of what we've been exposed to mm -hmm. and, and what we have embraced and experienced. If we've mm -hmm. not been, you know, I, I was listening to one of my old sermons today, and I said something that uh, stuck with me. I said, you can't expect people to know what you had to learn right it's, it's so unfair to expect somebody to know already know what it took you time to learn everybody hadn't learned the same thing that you know we don't learn on the same level we've been exposed to different things or uh, at the you, same pace we, even or at the same pace when you bring when we when, when we when we decide to get into a relationship believe it or not here it is there's a clash of two cultures <laughs> that come together and at some point even in this class, we have to figure out how to be cohesive so that we can connect. <laughs> this my culture, your culture. I'm 51 now. So when I go into my next relationship, if I'm in, at 51, it might be 55 at the rate I'm going. But it, it, when I bring that, though, all those years of experience, and you might be 40, whatever, 50, whatever, not 60, definitely. But if all those things come together, there's a clash, clash of cultures. And somehow mm -hmm. through the configuration <laughs> we've got to figure out how to make this thing cohesive so that we can connect and then once we connect now we combine these cultures and now we we cooking with grease man we doing this thing now right but it takes but we don't get that immediately we don't get that overnight we get that through trial and error mm -hmm. uh you're laughing at me. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we get that through trial and error. We get that through, uh, you know, experiences. We get that through making mistakes. Now, I'm going to tell you one of my biggest problems. I think I made a mistake. I, I'm This I, this one hit me in the middle. You know, I'll be looking. I'll be looking. I'll be looking. I'm sorry, y'all, who are my English teachers. Uh, I'll be looking in that mirror sometimes. And I think one thing that I'm, one mistake I think I made in the past is I always say I, w I don't like to argue and I won't argue. I think sometimes you might need to argue. I think, but not necessarily, you know, knock down, drag outs, you know, calling each other's out of garden tools and female dogs, because I would never do that, you know. But I think there needs to be a little contention every time so you can make up, I mean, every now and then so you can make up. And so you can see how people handle, you know, their, their situations and things of that nature. Because now I'm at the point where if you raise your voice to me a little bit, I, I shut down. I don't know if I hear voices from my childhood you know what i'm saying i don't know what i'm hearing in those moments but you can't yell at me but i think you have to learn how to at least deal with conflict yeah Com communicate we conflict. talked about that last time rules of communication rules of communication what was that rule you told us to make last time i forgot you said make a plan some kind make, of plan yeah so rules of communication in, includes from each individual person that's in the relationship what how you plan to communicate when mm. things aren't going so good you know if someone raises their voice does that really mean that they're upset or does it mean that they're passionate mm. okay. can you can you determine the difference that's good hey let me put the phone number back up in case because we got the, we got the therapist on so she, we, we got to put on retainer after a while but right now we she hadn't hit us for a she hadn't sent me an invoice yet, so I'm gonna stay where I'm at right now. But uh, let let me put the phone number back up, so in case somebody else wants to call in and get in on this conversation. Uh, like I said, we're not we're we're trying to bond. We're not trying mm -hmm. to be contentious. We're not trying to, and 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 there can be several right answers to the same question. You know, you, right. you do what? Like I said, we're not trying to be right or wrong. We just want to be relative. That makes sense. Yeah, well, I don't really care about being right or wrong. I just want us to be relative. Right. Uh, yeah more to decisions than arguments i agree with that I, I agree with that wholeheartedly but at the end of the day you do what works in your house now we can give you like i said some i think that that concept that she brought up last week and we re-emphasized tonight rules of communication that's when you learn your person like because if you're not if you don't do the right research and that's i'm gonna use that word 
if a person does fly off the handle, like you said, that just might be how passionate they are. They're not, they're not necessarily trying to. Now it's now here, but here's my problem. When you use those words as weapons, mm-hmm. because I, I understand your the inflection in your tone, but sometimes what's coming out of your mouth, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because be we, yeah, we, we, you know, like I said earlier, and I got some brothers on the line right now. And brothers, I need y'all to speak up right now. It's one thing I, I ain't got. I don't have any problem making you feel safe because I'm, I'm, I'm and I'm, I'm gonna do better at researching and learning, you know. Because I mean, I, I got the questions right. You can go to my Facebook page. I mean, hold on. Let me let me just pull a couple of them up before we get to this. Uh, let me pull it up. Hold on. Just a few of the answers that came out. Here are a few of them. All right. So women said, "By can y'all see that? If you can, I'll read it. By communicate. Let me make sure I got it. Okay, yeah." By communicating properly with me and reassuring me that he's got me, not just financially. Okay. Another person said, anticipating my needs and being accountable to what he says he's going to do. Hashtag do what you say you're going to do. Uh, if y'all want to stop me at any time, here another one is transparency. Women can handle it. Uh, this one thought she said she mis- misread the question, so I'm going to keep going. Dietra said, honesty and sh- uh, showing me he has my back no matter what. Uh, Tanitra said, do what he says, be honest, show integrity, effective communication, transparency is big and communication. Uh, one woman says she don't know financial stability. I'm going to read a couple more clear communication, be honest and transparent, be a man of his word. The common three themes seem to be communication and transparency were the biggest things. Right. And so when we talk about breeding uh relationships right and uh and the the breeding ground that's how let me use a different word the breeding ground for relationships We're talking about uh uh our environment creating because we don't realize what we do as you know as parents herman said something a minute ago that made sense and we're gonna go a little bit deeper in a second but herman said where, where's your comment at herman herman said you have to remember that when children are involved you're teaching what it should be and look like so if you're in a relationship and you have children or if you're married, even if you're married and you have children, you're starting to create culture that's going to effectively be in existence from now on. Because children respond based on like, for instance, finish how many children you have. Two. How, how old is the oldest? Nine. OK, so boy or girl. The oldest. I have uh-huh. my nine year old is a girl and my eight year old is a boy. Have you started teaching her like how to cook or how to do any? Both. Any of those? You teach both of them how to cook. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when as you start teaching them those things, they're picking up, you know, now they might use measuring cups, but after a while they might be able to eyeball it. You know what I'm saying? They might, you know, you might not, now they might need uh, a tablespoon of salt, but eventually they might be able to throw a few dashes in it. Right. And because right. as culture is created, they learn and they pick up and they watch how you do it, you know, and then they, you know, and eventually they do it like you did it, right? You know, so right. if you teach your children like to hide something from one of the other spouses, or you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do this, but I ain't gonna tell your mama, you know, I, I'll do all right. this kind of thing. Are you creating dissension in those moments? No, you're not. So no. you got you can hide, you should hide something in relationships by not by te- by teaching a relationship that you shouldn't. Say it one more time. I said, are you creating dissension by saying you know by teaching like for instance, say dad says. All right, I'm gonna do this, but don't tell your mama. Or you understand what I'm saying? Or because that's, now that's not that's not healthy because the kids are watching, and kids are. We have to remember that kids' minds are pure, mm-hmm. and so if if they hear that and they see that, they learn that. That's what they're learning because they don't. They're concrete to an extent in what they see. And some adults are too, because they just don't know how to expound on, I guess, their thoughts and their own imagination. So mm-hmm. it's it goes back to, I guess, when um, I know me growing up, a lot of my elders in my family, you didn't hear or see that because they took that behind the door, mm-hmm. you know, in the bedroom or in certain yeah. places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. you didn't you didn't hear that you didn't yeah. hear the discord you didn't hear the disagreements unless it was something that was big and then 
as we said in, in our generation, you stay in a child's place. You didn't comment. You didn't say anything. You were just like, oh, this is, I mean, in your mind, it was like, this is big, but you still couldn't process it because it was so big. So I processed a lot of things as an adult that I saw as a kid during those times, but I didn't understand it then, mm-hmm. if that makes mm-hmm. any sense, because it wasn't the norm yeah. for us to see adults having disagreements in front of us or even asking us not to tell somebody something. Yeah, that's I mean, I, I, yeah, that's that's interesting to me, because it seems to me the strongest relationships I see are those where, you know, they do everything together you know what i'm saying they you know it just don't seem like they have anything you know uh like i'm not well, i'm going with me you know what i'm saying i think I, I, I ran to my boy uh cedric dre the other day in little rock uh when i was leaving out we was at k hall and son and uh and um and he came in and he hollered at me and i said man how's the wife he's all she out there in the car <laughs> i said that's my boy man because he's just anytime you see him even when i go to uh if i when i when i go to dallas and see it and i hang out or we go to dinner or whatever whatnot It'd be, it's three of us. It's me, him, and his wife. You know, and ain't nothing wrong with that. That's me, you know what I'm saying? That's a good thing. You know, and I mean, if some people say, you know, go out and do be with the boys. That's your thing. But I respect the fact, and I'm not offended by it. You know what I'm saying? Be a, and I shouldn't be, I wouldn't be anyway. But I, I respect the transparency because I, I need I I want to be that cool with mine where I don't feel like, you know, uh I I feel like I probably did hide some things that I shouldn't have hid. You know what I'm saying, and and if you hide small things, then it, then you start to create a culture. You start to create a pattern, and once you start to hide one thing, then you go hide the next thing, and then when you start hiding this, and you're hiding money. If you had money, now you're hiding, you know, habits, and then all next thing you know, you feel comfortable hiding, and then you got a whole separate life, you know, that you that somebody should have been involved in, and they might have even helped you make some better decisions in the things you were doing. Or hell, the old saying is what an idle mind is what. The devil's, the devil's workshop. workshop. So you give yourself room to do those things. So I 100% feel the women, I feel the sisters when they say uh, that they need that transparency. I I, I feel that because uh, now sometimes I use, say the word vulnerable is a bad word. I don't like, I don't like, I don't want to be called vulnerable. I just don't. Cause I think to me, and this is me talking, uh, Miss Therapist. Now you can try to change my mind if you want to. I don't care. Uh, but don't i don't like being vulnerable because i don't want to be susceptible to an attack I and mean, that's what i think about vulnerable uh and i think uh like um i had an instance recently you know where i felt like i got a little vulnerable and then all of a sudden somebody said something that caught me off guard and now it triggered me but i knew i had grown because when it triggered me i didn't just go off i said "Ooh, okay well, I'm gonna tell you to have a good night on that one, <laughs> and I will catch up with you later. And that was it, you know. I'm 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 done, and uh, and I went on in my shell, and I, you know, and I was pissed. I ain't gonna lie, I was pissed, you know. But uh, because I felt like they came for me in a moment that I was somewhat vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't do that often. I don't. Do I that have often. to say that vulnerable is my word, and I use it a lot. But I'm gonna add as for as for why I say vulnerable. Um, You can be vulnerable in a safe place. It's not okay to be vulnerable out in an open space. I thought that was a safe safe space, but uh, I ain't going to say nothing about that one. That's a a whole other. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So if I give you that vulnerable and I thought it was a safe space, I'm already vulnerable. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I I can still... Yeah. But it sounds like your recovery was, was good because you were aware of the I'm do's and don'ts when you became, I'm, you know, I'm a man. I'm what a man appeared and I, to and be I don't an fight attack. Women. Let me say, I'm a man. And I don't fight women because, like I told you, I don't, I don't argue with nobody. I can't fight. So I, I don't, I don't, I just, you know. But in that moment, I was like, okay, this is why I don't. This is why yeah. I don't. You feel what I'm saying? And so at yeah. that point, let me be the warrior I am. You know what I'm right. saying? Because one thing about me, one thing about me, and I love Pareto's principle, right? Because Pareto says focus on your 80%, which is your strengths, and don't put 20% in those weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, you 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 start focusing on your weaknesses, trying to make those stronger, then you put your strengths at, at, at bay. Because now your strengths become start to lack because you started to focus on your weaknesses, right? So focus let me work, let me be my let me be strong where I'm strong at. And right. you help cultivate my strengths. Now, if you want to try to cover up some of my weaknesses. You know, as in covering, that's relationship to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because ministry is what seeing a need and meeting a need. So if you see right. an area that I'm weak, and I've met some very nice people that 
do that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a nurture. Because uh, women that I that I'm attracted to, I can't. You know, because I'm not. Everybody's not just. Yeah, <laughs> And let me put this caveat out there. Just because somebody like you don't mean you got to like them back. You know that, right? Right. Okay. I just want to say that. So the women that I'm attracted to are, uh, they're nurturers by nature. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I do like to be nurtured, but I'm learning how to reciprocate that nurturing. You know, I know my love language. My love language, two love languages are words of affirmation and touch. I know though that that that's those are my two right there. Words of affirmation. So when I hear cr- words where you question me or I feel like you might try to emasculate me or anything of that sort. And you know that my love language is words of affirmation. What are we doing right now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're in a middle mental spiritual warfare at that moment right there, but because I'm not going to fight mm-hmm. you. Right. Not. Now, you might get a series of texts and they might be have a lot of paper, you know, razor blades or paper cuts on them or something along those lines, but I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm telling my method. Uh, Dawu said, when I hear the women speak, I hear the lack of trust. We are all guilty of this behavior. And that's, and, and trust, that's and 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 Dawood, I think that's warranted. I think it's justified because so many of us have done not all of us, so many of us have done damage. I did a podcast one time called Undoing the Damage. And uh, and I said that we need to, as men, take responsibility for what we've done. Now, I can't make a woman take responsibility for what she's done. That, okay. That's not my job. Uh, but if I create a safe enough space, then I can create an avenue or a place where we can start to build, you know, trust and all those types of things. Right. And, uh, that's what I'm trying to work. Uh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Trying to take a, yeah. Well, Alicia said people try to take advantage of you when you're vulnerable, or at least they try to anyway. I agree with that. I agree with that. I think part of that too, is you have to recognize the spirits of other people too. Okay. And sometimes that's hard because, you know, what is it? Sheeps and wolves clothing. And so we have to be careful with those people that we trust or try to trust. And so vulnerability shouldn't come at the forefront. You know, it's the building of trust and understanding and making sure that that person um, understands you and you see their spirit for who they are. It's kind of, you know, you got to look beyond the veil of what a person presents to you. I think we had the conversation some time ago about sending a representative. Yeah. So yeah. you gotta, you have to do your due diligence to take your time to look beyond the veil to see the true spirit of that person before you make a choice or even take a step to become vulnerable. I agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, so um, I wanted to get a little bit deeper. I, I didn't know it was this late already, but I, I don't know why time flies when you're having fun. But I ain't no hurry. I ain't, I ain't gonna have to be at work tomorrow. So if you got to get off, you can, or you can hang out with me. I, whatever you want to do is fine with me. Uh, Phoenicia, whatever you want to do. Feel the spirits good and bad. You hanging with me? Are you going? You hanging with me? Are you going out? I'm hanging. I'm just sitting here chilling. Cool. All right. So notice what I said. She want the topic of tonight's show. She wants to feel safe. Y'all want to laugh one more time? Let's laugh one more time. Can we laugh one more time? Yeah. Did you, did I, did you see the video I played earlier? No, I didn't. Oh, you gotta see. Yeah, we're gonna laugh one more time. Then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna hit the second part of this show. But the second part ain't gonna be but about twenty or thirty minutes. It ain't gonna be too long. But I want to laugh one more time. If I laugh too, this was hilarious, y'all. I promise. This is the funniest video. One more time, we're going to laugh. Then hold on. we we'll do this. Spell us. U.S. Huh? U.S. Uh, now spell age. A. Age. Age. Yeah, like your age. A-G-A-Y. Age, like your age. Like how old you are, your age. Oh, I'm 63. No, spell age. E-G-I-H-T. Age, like your age. 63? No. S-I-X. Spell age. A-D-D-R-E-S-S. Age, like A-G-E. Okay, I just spelled that two times. No, spell age. Age, A-G-E-S-E. All right, now spell spell us. U-S. Now spell age. A-G-E. That's it, that's it, that's it. Okay. Now put them two words together, what it spell? Us, age. He said, "Who us age? <laughs> hey, that's right. Spell it us age first. So, so U.S. spell us age. No, U.S. spell my name first of all. No, spell us U.S. Spell age A G E. Now put it together with a spell us age <laughs> sixty three. Mine.
I got a cramp. I got a cramp. Oh my God. I got stamp. I got a cramp. I got a cramp. I'm laughing, y'all. It's funny. Wow. Okay. Keep the show going because I'm laughing too hard right now. Give me a second. I need a break. Hold on. Lord have mercy. This is crazy. Uh, uh, uh. Hold on. Oh my God. This is too funny. Wow. Uh, uh, uh. I didn't God of mine. Uh, uh, uh. All right. I'm back now. <sighs> that was okay. funny. Okay. Okay. And that's the thing, you know, I think even in relationships, you know, when you get <laughs> to places talking for where, real, yeah. <laughs> where <laughs> there's hardships, I think that you have to find the humor. You know, if you yeah, can't yeah. find the humor to laugh at yourself yeah. or to, to laugh at your partner and your partner not take it so seriously when it's something that's genuinely funny, y'all have to be able to laugh in a relationship and laugh at each other. Well, we must be in a relationship because we just laugh together. I promise you did. I, I laugh so hard. And I'm drinking this water and I didn't got a cramp in my stomach. And don't laugh at me, Jarvis. I know you do probably 100 crunches a day. But I got a cramp in my stomach. I had to stand up. I was laughing so hard. Keisha said, it's shaking her dang head. Uh, <laughs> uh, but some people are still being serious in this thing. Thank you, Dawood. I appreciate it. Dawood said, when we come into a relationship being apprehensive uh, about the other person, we are not being honest to ourselves. Why deal with someone you can't trust? Absolutely. So, um, and that's and that's true. So I'm sure if, at that instance, I'm sure a woman does not feel safe. And if she does not feel safe in that instance, she should uh, dismiss herself or, you know, or y'all shouldn't move forward. And, I mean, and that's OK. That's fine. It's OK to say something didn't work. I would rather say it didn't work than to look up five, 10, 15 years together. And we hate each other because we couldn't figure out how to talk. <laughs> what I do this time, Chassie? Y'all laughing at me. All right. So this I named the show earlier. I, I named the show tonight. She wants to feel safe and he wants to be respected. And so when I talk about this whole respected piece, I went and did some research and I found this article. Can I, I'm going to read a little bit of it to you all and, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, Phoenicia. But uh, okay. this is what the article said. It said the most important thing to understand about men is that they value being respected more than they value feeling love. Sounds quite crazy, right? Isn't love the most important thing? Yes, love, it is incredibly important, but how do we feel loved is the big question. Many men describe that they know that their wife, mother, daughter loves them, but they're not sure that she likes them. How this shows itself is that many women treat their, the men in their lives, what, what Alicia said earlier, uh, how this shows many is that many times, many women treat the men in their lives quite harsh. They're very critical, use a sharp, commanding or condescending tone of voice and treat the man like a child. This makes the man feel disrespected. And although he knows that the woman deep down loves him and that she show up to support him uh, if he's sick or injured, it makes him start to resent her. Why? Because men feel loved when they are treated with respect. Can it, can, is, is that disputable? No, I don't think so. It's not. And, <laughs> uh, but, and, and and it also points to the reality that we're two different beings, right? <laughs> and that's where the balance for me comes in. Some, I think sometimes men want to marry a version of themselves and some women want to marry a version of themselves. And it's just not really realistic. And it's going to keep you, to an extent, limited. Because... If you're looking for somebody that wants that lovey-dovey type, all that, in a man, it's probably not going to be it. Because, as they said, so many so many men don't equate loving and liking in the same way. Yeah, you can like me. I mean, you can love me, but I don't even feel like she likes me. And if a yeah. woman doesn't feel liked or doesn't feel loved in an instance, I mean, she's probably going to have a, probably a bigger breakdown or have a, have a bigger issue with it than a man would, right? I mean, talk, talk to me about that for a moment. I think that um, what you're saying is definitely on point. Women and men feel different. And the source of where that's coming from is different. Um, respect for men. If, if you think, think back to how men are raised in society and in our communities, and I think in a lot of cultures, actually, it is about respect. Yeah. Even yeah. as a young boy coming up, we talk about, you know, teach our boys to respect you know, girls to respect themselves. In girls, we teach them about love because what do they hear even as young girls? I love you. Do we necessarily say that all the time with boys? 
Not yeah. always. It's about being tough. It's about yeah. being strong. And so that's part of our fault because we're determining a difference between the sexes of young boys and young girls. And then when they grow up, then all of a sudden you're wanting them to become feeling beings. Well, that we didn't necessarily raise them up to become feeling beings. We raised them up to be tough and, and to, to show respect and to earn respect. And mm-hmm. if you don't get that, then that means that someone's disrespecting you or not appreciating you for who you are. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh that that that's interesting. That that that's that's interesting because you know what? Even men and Dawood, you probably can agree agree with this as well. Uh, a lot of times, you a lot of the fights that boys go through, even with each other in school, he was disrespecting me. He was disrespecting me because respect is something you know. And 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 in a lot of cultures, especially those that have arranged marriages, the marriage success rate is a lot higher than it is in our culture, right? Because people have, I mean, for different reasons, of course, but yeah. families marry families, you know what I'm saying? Uh, for different reasons, you know, uh, and and then they learn to love each other. You know what I'm saying? They they figure out the respect, or if they ever learn each other, I don't, I don't know, but they don't, it's, it's for, a di- they get married for different reasons. A lot of us want to feel those, you know, those uh, butterflies and, you know. And, I was just about to say the, that. You want to feel yeah. butterflies and your head in the clouds. Yeah, you want to feel all that, but when that's said and done, um, uh, that when that when that's when that's not when when we don't feel that, then we think that we don't have anything. But you can be compatible mm-hmm. and build a connection. You know what I'm saying? You, we might not have a connection up front, but we might be compatible. Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Dawood said, "If you respect him, he will make you feel safe." Now, Alicia said, Dawood said, yeah, respect will follow safety. I'm just saying, at least a real woman. So there the problem is. So he's saying, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that he's saying this or she's saying that, but he's saying, if you respect me, you're going to feel safe. She's saying, if, if he feels safe, then he'll get respect. Is that, is that how that goes? Is that how that really works? Felicia, what do you think? I think it's going to depend on the two individuals that's in the relationship. Okay. Because that goes back to the courtship and, you know, building of a friendship. If you come from two different backgrounds, but you don't communicate what safety and respect looks like, then you can think because it goes back to perception. Mm -hmm. So you can think that, that you all are saying the same thing, but go on two completely, totally different pages. So, when he becomes vulnerable or attempt to become vulnerable in that situation, then what happens is you think you're showing him respect or even showing him love, but it's actually disrespect because y'all haven't talked about it and what that looks like to you. Yeah. And there right, comes the gonna... miscommunication. Alicia, you're going to have to tell me that comment again because I'm not going to drive, go all the way back to the top of your comment. And, and I, uh, she said, go, well, go to my first comment again. Let me, I got to scroll way up there to go back to that. Uh, Copy it and send it back to me again. Um, but yeah, but that's but the thing is, but that's 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 the thing. It got you got to go where it works. But I, to me, to me, you know, we live in a different society. I get it. You know, this society, you got to earn respect. You got to earn respect. You got to earn respect. I give people respect just from the beginning. You you got to just because a person just because a person hadn't earned your respect doesn't mean they've earned your disrespect. And so right. I think sometimes, yeah. And so I think sometimes. Uh, because we don't feel like we respect somebody, we'll automatically come in disrespecting them. And that because uh, for whatever reason, past relationships, past, uh, and, and, and Chastity, you said something earlier about uh, the past relationships. It, it's not always the past relationships that we were in that affected us. Sometimes it's the past relationships that Absolutely. we saw that affected that us. That you saw. You saw something vicariously yeah. through somebody else. You thought it was okay when she talked, you know, crazy about that mom, that, that that man, or you know, he talked crazy about that woman, or he called them all kind of names. She called, you know, that became the norm. And so then, when, when something becomes a norm like that, then it's natural. You feel it's natural to disrespect. You know what I'm saying? And you mm-hmm. don't have to start. I mean, disrespect doesn't have to be the initial platform. The initial platform can just be let's get to know each other. Right. <laughs> Uh, let me see. Uh, hold on. I mean, Mike Evans said, yeah, but men, men are not taught what respect is in a relationship. Only what's disrespectful in a relationship. So what, what's, what is, so to help me out then, Mike, what is, res, what is respect in a relationship? Help me. Because it, it, teach us tonight. Yeah, and, I'm, and I'm confused not being, I'm about not, that one. 
Yeah, I'm not being facetious at all. I mean, if uh, because I, I think it's good, I, but I'm just confused about me too. But what on, exactly on my, only, yeah, my only thing in that is, is that we are always told what men aren't, you know, and what men aren't, and what men aren't, and some of time, and on some instances, we're not. But I think it's not, I don't think it's fair to throw a big blanket over every situation and call it, you know, that that that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. I don't know. But Mike, if you I, I, if you don't mind, have the phone numbers right there. You can call in 404-860-2775. I would love for you to call in and clarify what that first of all, what it means. And then second of all, what what should a man be taught? Uh, that as far as respect and relationships, I mean, I, I, other than the natural, the normal thing, open doors, uh, make a uh, provide, be a protector, provider, priest, all those types of things. I get that. But if you don't mind, right. please, sir, uh, phone numbers 404-860-2775. Let's see what Herman said. Herman's been giving us some good gems and Herman is married. So I like his words. How you make someone feel safe that hasn't already shown the respect need for you to care if you are safe or not. And that's the question. How you make somebody feel safe that hasn't even shown you respect yet? That's that's the conundrum. That's where the battle keeps coming. And that's where we're trying to get past so that we can build the bond. Am I saying, go ahead, tell me if I'm wrong or uh, where I'm at, Phoenicia. Let me read some more of these comments. I don't think you're wrong in anything that you've said yet, but I think um, that wasn't Herman, Mike. Mike's statement, which I do hope he calls in because I think that goes to what we both to share is perception. What does he mean by respect that men are not taught respect? So because a man's perception of respect and a woman's perception of respect could be two different things. So I think we need to, if a female can share what respect means to them, Mm. and how they're showing it to a man and if mike can hopefully call in and say what he says because i think this would be a real in real time example of what we're talking about yeah mike i see you i see you in a general sense but i'm trying to get some specific answers if you don't mind calling <laughs> in uh like i said I, I, he said i was respect and you didn't say anything wrong we're not challenging what you're no. saying no no no, no. Let's, let, let, let all of you all that are listening we don't give right or wrong answers we right. give relevant answers. If it's relevant to you, roll with it. If it's not relevant, continue on your search. <laughs> there are more therapists and more influencers. I personally try to bring real therapists on because some things I don't understand. Sometimes I want a female therapist because I know she can speak from both the therapist side and from a woman, lady side. Um, then sometimes I bring male therapists. Ray might call in in a minute if he's listening right now. And we'll listen to what Ray has to say. So it's not a matter of right or wrong, but sometimes these conversations can have so many layers to them. You ever took right. an onion and just start pulling back layers on the onion more and more and more? These conversations are like onions. And sometimes they make you cry. They do. I've had instances on this show where people are crying because we understand the layers. And I get it. You say, I, I, he said, I was speaking about being brought up and taught about what respect is. So I'm asking you, bro, uh, Mike Evans, what respect in a relationship looks like because if we're not taught that prayerfully somebody's listening at on april the first and this ain't even april fools at this point we're telling the truth uh at 10 13 p.m if there's a man who is listening in the future that has not been taught what respect is in relationships after hearing what you say um uh, then maybe it'll help them and maybe if anything it'll shine a light on their path <laughs> that's what we try to do we try to be light because if we're light then we could potentially, we could be light on somebody's path. And if we're light on somebody's path, we can help them walk a little bit better. I don't want, it's a whole bunch of good podcasts out here. A lot of them doing good numbers, right? And then a lot of them doing numbers, but they saying a whole bunch of bull and it ain't helping nobody. I want to help us. Right. I want us to talk. I want us to have good conversations, not for the, uh, it's not for the likes. Cause I would have quit a long time ago if it was just for the likes. I promise you I would. Cause I would, I ain't get, I would, I would, uh, Okay, I get that, Mike. Mike said, I, I truly don't know what it looks like. I just know what disrespect looks like. I get it. And so with that being, so I, I, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. And, and, and that's the thing. If we can ever get to the point where, especially at the incipient stage, in the beginning, if we can mm -hmm. start out, if, like I told you all last week, I taught my children when they were in school, 
that every semester they started off with 100. And any points that they lost during the course of the semester, they gave back. So my point is, at the beginning, on the first day of class, y'all had all A's. And you got nine weeks to keep your 10 points to make sure you stay in A status. And you got nine weeks to make sure you don't give up 18 points so you can at least stay in B status. Because I would let them make two Bs at the most because they were so engaged in social activities. Well, they graduated with two of the girls, graduated with over 4.1, 4.3 grade, grade point averages. The boy was 3.6, 3.7, but he came out of uh, uh, Jacksonville State with all A's on the president's list and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, but that was a that was a mentality that I taught them, right? What if we went into relationships with the same mentality? That I'm going I'm I'm going to give you a hundred starting off. You give me a hundred. We just going to have mutual respect, even if it's not respect, because I because respect can deepen over time too. I can gain. Mm-hmm. Oh, Holy Ghost, come talk to me, Holy Ghost. I need. To, I wish I had some music, but uh, you know. I can gain more respect for you in the future. For what though? But how do you get there? A hey, life, getting to know each other, lifing, you know, me, uh, sitting on the couch, like you said, just enjoying each other's and presence. Sometimes things not going so well. When you things have going well. you have that first disagreement, it's something you passionate about, something the other person is passionate about, but I'm bringing up those rules of communication and you actually hear each other and respect one another in that conversation, that's where growth happens. That's when you are made uncomfortable, that's your best opportunity for growth. Say that again. When you are made uncomfortable, uh-huh. that's your best opportunity for growth. Wow. You know what? And and I can see an agricultural aspect to that because typically, um, well, one way of making grass grow is to put fertilizer on it. Mm-hmm. And what is fertilizer? Nutrients, Species, huh? Dead Nutrients. things, <laughs> manure, fed oh, feces. Yeah. I'm talking about, but it's mess. You know what I mean? You it's mess, and mess sometimes make things grow. And so, and if smell you good, out, you don't, don't, huh? And smell good. <laughs> not good. Hey, not that kind of mess. Yeah, eventually. But I'm talking. About, I, I, but I I'm saying good. you put you put stinky, nasty. When you think about manure, because I plant a garden. You put manure because those are the nutrients that you need. You don't like it when you're putting your hands in it and you're using it. But over time, it starts to smell good. And it it produces some of the juiciest, best, full of color fruit. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? But that's figuring out. But, but. Going through something. But as you said, there should be rules for communication. Because not giving up easy. Yeah. I, my, like my friend, I, I, like I said, I, I have one of my friends I was talking to one time. Uh, I said something. They said something, whatever happened. And, and I shut down. And she automatically said, okay, <laughs> so how do I handle James when he goes in his shell? How do I handle James? And I, and I, that, I felt that. I might not have said it in that moment, but I felt that because yeah. she was basically saying, okay, I, I've noticed a shift in your attitude right now. I've noticed a little shift in how you and you're responding at this particular moment. But how now in this instance, how do I handle it? Because I don't want to mess it. And, and I was like, OK, I can ride with that. I can rock with that. But those are rules for communication. We're going to do a whole show on rules for communication. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a I want to do a whole segment uh, on rules for communication for real. In fact, in fact, on May 4th. We're going to do a segment on the rules of communication as we start doing the bonding of the sexes. We're going we're gonna to do a segment on that. If you all are in Little Rock in on May the 4th, uh, we're doing a, another live podcast. The last one was called The Bonding of the Sexes. This is going to be The Bonding of the Sexes 2. Uh, let's run it back. Uh, and we're going to do some of the same things. Phoenicia is, she didn't know it till right now, but based on this conversation, she is going to be on stage with me. And we're going to discuss... The rules of communication. And yeah, I didn't know you, that. No, she didn't know that. She, I just made that known. So she's going to be on stage with me. So that means you don't have to buy your ticket. So don't worry about buying your ticket. Uh, uh, you're good on that. And you do come to the VIP reception in the beginning. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to talk about the rules. We're going to kick it off with the rules of communication. And that night, we're going to share those. Because as we talk, and, and I'm, I'm winding this conversation down. I appreciate everybody for listening. But uh, 
that's and then no but if anybody has something they want to call in hold on i missed the question aren't we supposed to believe that we're being respected in a relationship until we feel oh yeah no doubt no doubt no doubt until we we should that sounds like the right thing oh i didn't see it can you can you put that back up i didn't see it yeah he said aren't we supposed to believe that we're being respected in a relationship until we feel we've been disrespected Dead space. I'm waiting on you. I thought you were going to answer it. I'm. I'm thinking. Oh, okay. We can't have that much white I'm, space. I'm, no. <laughs> I'm processing. Okay. Um. My first and foremost answer to that, it still goes back to perception, because depending on your experiences, you may believe that someone is being respectful, but someone else in the same situation may see it as pure disrespect. Say it again. It depends on your own experiences. I would say like even from your past and and what your personal experiences were, because you can believe that someone is respecting you in a relationship. Like if, um, I don't know if I, put it in the group or not, but I saw a post where someone was saying, this girl, she met this guy and she moved him in. Uh, He was driving her car. She was loaning him money, you know, all these things, but she felt like he was respecting her because he was, you know, taking care of what she thought was taking care of. You know, she was taking me to work. I mean, he was taking me to work. He was dropping me off, but it's your car. Mm-hmm. He would put gas in my car when he was out, but it's your car. Mm-hmm. For me, that would be disrespect because you're not mindful of my my things, my items. But mm-hmm. she may say, oh, he loves me because he's chauffeuring me around. He's dropping me off. He's doing those things. But my perception is I need to have my own and he needs to have his own. Now, if you need to borrow mine, that's fine. So I know that's kind of off with an example, but. It's perception. It is. It is. It, but, and here's, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna push back a little bit. Not much. Just, 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 just. I'm, I'm, I'm a nudge. I ain't gonna push back. Uh, but in in some of those instances, right? Um, especially from the outside looking in, I think sometimes, all too too many times, we project what we wouldn't do. Or what we wouldn't put up with, or you know what I'm saying, and we try to and we project that on other people and say that they shouldn't do or they shouldn't do this. You know, no, what I'm I agree with that. Okay. I agree, but you have to be clear. It's good to be clear of the other person's intentions. Okay. So, if it works for you, goes back to communication, and you're clear as for the person's intentions as for why they're doing that. Okay. That's different. But if the intention of the other person, they're trying to make you believe that they respect you, but it's really about manipulation yeah, and not about respecting the person, the the person you're not respecting the person. There's a thinking error called me, me, me. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get me what I want. Okay. okay. I see that. that. And so depending on perception and experience but this person because you can see naivety someone who's truly naive and that can be your person because i can get what i need to get me what i want but that so person manip- is naive so you're saying manipulation point- yeah gotcha. but they can but their perception of what this person's actions is is respect is they respect me they love me they care about me they're taking care of you know they're taking care of me but you select, and I'm not saying a lot of people are like that, but that's where it's important to have a conversation about values, what's important to you, and, and make sure that they line up together. I get that. And, and, and I think that's where a lot of the issue comes. And that's where the difference for men versus women, uh, as far as why respect is so much important for me, mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. and love is more important for women because it's an emotional thing. They want to feel a certain type of way. Certain things. So how do you mesh them together? Yeah, and how and, and that's that's the challenge. How do we put this thing together? And that's and it starts with that one word I put in the middle of that statement. And not mm-hmm. but right because, because it's doable. Still, it can work. 
Because a lot of people say she wants to feel safe, but he wants to be respected. That changes the whole tone of what we're saying. But if but I there's say a word that you also safe, said that you didn't like, and that's being vulnerable. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, I well, like for it. me, because if it's two people, <laughs> the two people, no, I still don't like it. I'm not. And you're both it. trying to mesh it together. Yeah. At some point, you got to get naked. Emotionally, I get naked, but I won't be vulnerable. If I got, if I'm naked, I promise you, I got a nine right in my in my nightstand beside my door, right beside the bed. I'm, and that's okay. Let me be that. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. And well, I'm saying emotionally naked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, well, and I'm giving a metaphor. I get it. Yeah, but my thing I got is, you. Yeah, and my, but my thing is, let me be me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let me be mad. Let me be me. Let me, you know, some. Let me. Some, I had a girl tell me one time, your feet don't even stink. Let me be have feet. Let me have stanky feet. Let me be musty. Let me do all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Let me be a man. You but know let what me I'm ask saying? you a question based okay. on that. Let me ask you a question. If you're being you, if you're trying to grow into something, then when do you compromise? Well, I shouldn't say compromise. Yeah, you, uh, that's when, a bad do you, word. when do you stretch yourself? I become more me. What, what about the other person? Me. They're becoming more me. Because I'm. Cause let me tell you something. You ever heard a cup and saucer mentality? Say it one more time. <laughs> if, you, if you fill a cup up, what happens? It overflows. It's, it's going to overflow. Yeah. And so that overflow, everybody around benefits from the overflow if it's done right. Right. And the more me I become, you're going to be a better you as well. Trust me on that one. If you, the more me, and, and we're going to grow together because as you respect me, as the fellow said earlier, and it's not contingent upon the me, me making you feel safe is not contingent upon you respecting me, but your feeling safe would definitely be a byproduct of you respecting me. Does that make sense? And as we grow and, 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 and I'm going to respect you, there's going to be mutual respect, but here's the, but the thing is, as we said a few moments ago, when we come into this clash of cultures, yo, whatever you bring into the relationship, whatever I bring into the relationship, as we come into this clash of culture, there has to be the mutual respect that you have a culture and I have a culture. Right. And now we got to figure out how do we bring this clash together so that we can be cohesive and figure out how to communicate so that we can connect. And it's not you telling me how to be a man. It's not me telling you how to be a woman. All I, One of my favorite slogans about me is every day I become a little bit more me. Because I want to be more me tomorrow than I am today. And the more me I am, especially if we get past the relationship stage and get into a marital stage and the two really do become one. So the more, the more, oh, the, oh God, the more me I become, the more us we become. And the more me you become, the more us we become. That was good. That was really good. what you say, Mike? When it comes to this fact, when does giving grace give into giving up? Ooh, dang. Oh, Jesus, that's a question. I wasn't ready for that one, Mike. I was about to get off the dog on the show. You messed me up with that one. Ugh. Read that, Doc. <laughs> he messed me. I couldn't even read the rest of the question. It hit me so hard in my chest. I felt like when it comes to disrespect, when does giving grace give into giving up? Some question about safety. Wow. Same question about safety. Same question. That's, about that's safety. deep. That's deep, Mike. God, that's a good one, my friend. I'm gonna let you handle that one. I don't, I'm not tackling that one. Or if somebody on the line that wants to call in and answer it, uh, y'all welcome. To. I think uh, give it's relative, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, giving up. I think that goes back to deal breakers. You know, I mm -hmm. think oftentimes in relationships people give up too quickly because um, you're made uncomfortable. And I sense uncomfortable sometimes as an internal internal vibration that some people say you triggered my anxiety. And so they start to vibrate. If you, you know, you picture like this, this vibrating because you're, you're pushing up against something that I'm not comfortable with. I don't like that. It makes me feel bad. And so we throw in the towel because it's an uncomfortable emotion. But if you allow yourself to trust the process and if the other person is willing going back to the cup overflowing i'm still present in the moment with you mm -hmm. even though you may feel like you're shutting down but i'm gonna give you some time i think last week we talked about uh walking away and waiting for a neutral time to express concerns 
Mm-hmm. It goes back to a benefit of the doubt. You know, you give person that one time. Let's talk about it. I'm going to give you your break. Let's have a conversation. Be open, honest, and clear. Try to process it together. That's not giving up. That's giving it another chance. If it happens again, let's process it. Let's talk about it. But if it becomes repetitive, that's when I think you should give in. I say about three three times before giving up quickly because you need to process it and address it. Mr. Johnson, that's my that's my low right bar, but he said something, and it, and it, he actually said something that pre- preceded the question, and it a- actually answered the question up front. He said, "You can you you also have to be clear mm-hmm. on what's disrespectful to you, yeah, so there absolutely. aren't any gray areas." And then he came right back and said, "The give up comes when the fact that grace was given and the disrespect continues." That's absolutely. Clear. So you so here it is, and this is the word y'all love to say. They're one of them buzzwords like shenanigans and toxic and uh, what's the other one they say all the time? Narcissistic. But here's another one. Once you create boundaries mm-hmm. <laughs> and and person keeps violating your boundaries. Repetitive. It becomes repetitive. Yeah. And then that's a problem. And and if you continue to let it happen, then you have basically become complicit to the circumstance. And mm-hmm. they think it's OK. They think. It's right. Okay. And and after you've addressed it Ooh. and put your boundaries in place, then I don't see it as giving up. That's choosing you. Oh, let me read Lioness's comment. She just said it. Look at what she said. Girl, you, you need to call in with that statement. That was a good one. She said, I think that when it moves from uncomfortable to pain and from compromise to complete sacrifice, that's beyond grace. That's good, Lioness. That's my business partner, just so you oh, know. That's your business partner? Okay. Yes, she's going to be at the event? She is. Right, okay, good. You can buy her ticket now since so you don't have to buy yours. <laughs> uh, uh, I was supposed to be giving away a ticket tonight. I am going to give away a ticket tonight. Let me see who's been the most. Yeah. Because then enough people really um, participate on Chastity. I'm giving you a free ticket. You've been real involved and engaged tonight. Chastity Walker is the winner of our free ticket. So you get a VIP ticket and get inbox me and I'll tell you how to get it. Chastity. If you're coming on May the 4th, let me know because you've been the most involved that I've noticed tonight. So, uh, yeah. I get to make those kind of executive decisions. Is that wrong of me to make that decision? No, it not wasn't. at all. Chastity <laughs> wins a ticket. So not at all. Because she's been the most engaged tonight. She said, okay, James, come through. Yeah, you got <laughs> you got the ticket. You bet, but if you don't let me tell you right now, Negro X, I'm not gonna chase you down to give you a ticket. So you better come in my inbox and give me my get your ticket if you want it. I'm joking. But um, real talk, if you want the ticket, you got it. All right. And that is a VIP ticket. VIP tickets right now, the uh I'm getting, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to wind it down. Uh, the VIP tickets at this particular moment, they were $40. That I'm doing an early bird special. They're only 30 now. Uh, let me tell you what you get for VIP. You want to, you want to hear what you get for VIP? Yes. Yes. Uh, VIP, you get VIP food. That's going to be a little bit more than finger foods. You also, for those of you who drink now, I know it's going to be some church folk there who don't. That's fine. If you don't drink, don't drink. That's cool. I ain't got a problem with that. But if you do drink, you can drink as much as you want to. Now you ain't going to have all night to get, to get, tipsy like that but you will have access to drinks also you get invited to a vip reception that starts at six o'clock on that night uh where we'll have photo ops and all those kind of things we'll mingle we'll network we'll do all those things and you also get guaranteed seating because if it sells out of course vips get first seats okay so that's it and uh, but also if you don't want to go vip and you only want to do uh the general admission they were 20 they're only 15 dollars right now Go ahead and buy your tickets, please. Go ahead and buy your tickets. So I've had several people tell me they've had trouble. Stick around, uh, uh, Finish. Uh, I've had several people tell me they've had trouble getting on. I don't understand how. But this is, is that it? No, that's not it. Here it is. This is what it looks like. If you go to the bottom of the page, all you got to do is go right down here to the bottom of the page. This is on my website, www.theintellectualstew. Let me go ahead and find this. www.theintellectualstew.com dot com right here if you go to the bottom page bottom of the page of the website scroll straight down this is a there's a pictures from the last event if you scroll to the bottom and you see the bonding of the sexes too right there see fly above to purchase tickets you can call a number or you can click the link below you click the link below that yellow box that says vip is a link the other box says general admission is a link watch what happens when i click on it 
It says 40, but it's only 30. When you click on it and you scroll to the bottom of the page, you register right here. You click on register. It asks you for your name, first and last name, your email address. Now, on the phone number, you put country code asterisk. Where's the asterisk at? Lord, I forgot what the asterisk is. But it's on here somewhere. <coughs> hit, hit the asterisk. Oh, there it is. Hit asterisk. Asterisk. The page and hadn't one. progressed. Huh? The page hadn't what? progressed on the screen. Oh, it hasn't. Okay, well, my bad. But go, scroll down to the bottom of that page. and when you, Now, that's it right there, though. But it didn't <laughs> click to the next link. Oh, okay, I know what happened. It did, it did uh, progress, but the problem is it opened up in a different link. So when it went to another link, the next link looks like that. No, that's not it. Or did I click out of it? Oh, there it is, event. Yeah, there it is. So you click to the bottom of that page now. You see it now? Third yes. anniversary of the Intellectual Stew Podcast. That's the page that's going to, that's what's going to click, uh, come up after you click on that link. Put in your name, last name, email address, your phone number with the country code. Country code has to be, is it plus one? I think it's plus one or star one. I think it's plus one. Yeah, plus one. Plus one. Yeah, plus one. And uh, yeah, plus one. How do you put a plus one? There we go. Anyway, whatever. Plus one in your phone number. My phone number almost popped up. I want everybody to know my phone number. But anyway, so you scroll to the bottom of the page, and when you scroll to the bottom of the page, it's not really hard. It's not. You can really, and if you have a problem, call me, 404-860-2775. I don't have no problem helping walk you through it. But let's go ahead. I need you all to register because I want to prepare for you properly, and uh, I don't want to wait till the last second and then not know you're coming, and then I can't prepare for you properly. Go ahead. $30 for VIP, $15 for general admission, and we will have a wonderful time. Uh, Phoenicia's going to be there tonight. No asterisk is a plus sign. My bad, uh, Lakeisha. Lakeisha is the one that's doing, uh, that set up all this. So she's going to make sure we're right on all this. So, and Lakeisha will tell you once you pay your money, uh, you don't have to, you can automatically will get a text message or email that comes with your barcode on it or your QR code on it. And the QR code is your ticket to get in that night. So it's going to be delivered to you immediately. All right. So you're going to get the bang for your buck. Trust me. Y'all that came last time, you came last time. How was it, Phoenicia? Because we, we never it had that. It was wonderful. It was tell, really, tell, really, really tell nice. Tell the people about the environment. Tell, tell the people about the environment. It was an intimate environment. Um, not too big. Um, the energy, it was definitely positive energy. Um, the people mingled together. Um, and everybody didn't know everybody. Um, we knew each other from um, just participating in your podcast. I mean, I think what you're doing is something that's really good. And what was shared um it's kind of like tonight i mean you come with a theme and it you just take the direction of the crowd and the questions that were going so um it's real it's relevant it's appropriate and it's necessary uh for our culture today so it was definitely enjoyable she said it's real it was relevant and it was necessary for our culture I like that. Keisha, I'm sorry. My bad. I said it's just a QR code. She said, no, it's a personalized ticket. Don't shortchange her efforts. Okay. I got you. So you, <laughs> once you pay for your ticket, uh, once you pay for it, you will receive a personalized ticket. Well, it, it'll come in the email, right, Lakeisha? It'll come in the email. So uh, that's what's going to happen. Uh, Chastity, we will give you your uh, sign. We'll have a uh, look. Actually, don't, you don't even have to reach out to me. You see Lakeisha's name right there, Lakeisha Reynolds. Reach out to her. Uh, reach out to her and she will give you the information that you need to get your ticket okay everybody else now if you have if you having trouble getting in and you need somebody to help you get through it Lakeisha you can hit her in her inbox you can hit me in my inbox that's fine you can hit Kiki in her inbox but we'll uh it's not that hard I promise it's not rocket science it's not rocket science all right well Phoenicia I appreciate you for jumping in with me tonight and helping me out I'm going to go ahead Absolutely. and say goodnight to you. I'm going to say goodnight to you now. And uh, we'll see you next week or sometime soon, okay? I'll be on All a right. cruise. I'm my bad. Oh, she said she'll be on a cruise. My bad. She said she'll be on a cruise. Venetia, I'm sorry. I, I said bye and I clicked you out too bad. Chastity, uh, Lakeisha, Chastity asked you if you would inbox her. Uh, All right. So we'll get it work. Y'all, she got you. She said she got you. I would have been like, no, you need to inbox me. I'm giving you a ticket. But she said, I'm joking. I'm growing up. I'm growing up. 
that's what I would have did in my pre-save days. But let me tell you one thing, Chastity. If I give you a ticket and you don't show up, man, you're going to have a problem. She won the ticket. She won the ticket. Ah, can I give away two tickets tonight, Lakeisha and Kiki? Can I give away two kick, two tickets, please? Please. Somebody say yes. Or if y'all don't say yes, I'm going to make an executive decision. So five, four, three. Okay, that's how I can give away two tickets. Okay, cool. All right. Alicia's going to get a ticket, too. Alicia, reach out to uh, Lakeisha. Reach out. She said, man, I'm coming. Reach out to Lakeisha Reynolds. And if you plan on being in town that day, May the 4th, uh, you're going to uh, you get a free VIP ticket as well. That's all I'm giving out for the next two weeks, so that's fine. So those are two tickets I'm giving. But Alicia has been very, very, very uh, – she's been very engaged tonight as well. I guess I gave away three tickets tonight because Phoenicia's coming. Well, Phoenicia's a panelist, so you got Phoenicia, you got to remember what we're talking about because I'm going to forget after tonight. So, <laughs> But uh, our two winners tonight are Chastity Walker and Alicia Allman. Now, Alicia – I don't know, because she lives out of town. So if she doesn't make it, then she might have to give her a ticket away. Okay. Yes, yeah, VIP. You get all the drinks. You get the VIP reception. Uh, and you also get guaranteed seating. And you get food, because we have VIP food as well. We got caterers that come in. We, we do it big over here. We do it big. So if you can make it. Now, your ticket is not transferable. But if you can't make it in town because you're in Atlanta, I'll change it. I will let you give it to somebody. But that's only because uh, you live in Dallas. But you're coming. Okay, then we ain't got to worry about that. So may, now you're coming. So I, I expect you to bring a couple of people who are going to buy their own tickets. <laughs> All right. So y'all go ahead. Go to www. Oh, your cousin. Okay. I don't know if she's going to come this time. I know she came last time. I'm not sure. But uh, but real talk, it's going to be, it's going down. Oh, let me show the flight. Yeah, I know I just got off a flight. I should be sleepy. Okay, that's the flyer. Where is it? My 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 internet must be going slow now. Cause it ain't coming up. Oh no, you know what? I know what's wrong. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Guess that means my internet isn't going slow. Okay, where are my overlays at? Oh, here it is. This is the flyer. Let's do it again. The binding of the sexes two. And that's going to be on May the 4th at the Kappa House in Little Rock, Arkansas. Six o'clock to nine o'clock at the Kappa House. Uh, like I said, drinks, food, uh, general admissions only $15. We'll leave, and we, have, we don't forget about the general admission people. We even have hors d'oeuvres for you. And you can purchase drinks. But uh, May 4th, yeah. Yeah, let's get them in here. Okay, I'm just, what am I doing? I'm listening to my music. It's in my ears. All right, so Chastity will be in the house. Alicia, I'll send you the flyer. Alicia will be in the house. Alicia and Chastity, reach out to you. Look at the comments and look at Lakeisha Reynolds. Reach out to her. She is handling the tickets. She'll make sure you get your QR code so you can make it in. Be there at 6 o'clock on, on that day because at 7, we will start recording. And at seven o'clock, and so at seven o'clock, we'll start recording and we'll record for a couple of hours. All right. So uh look, trust me, Lakeisha's probably sent y'all texts and emails already. So check your check your inboxes. <laughs> check your inboxes. But no, uh Kiki and uh Netta and uh Lakeisha and Jackie, those are my people. They, they, they really are my people. So uh we're making it happen. Hey, did y'all enjoy the show tonight? If you did, uh you know, if y'all want to support the platform, hey, y'all, some of y'all enjoying this and uh Y'all see, I'm willing to give. If y'all want to uh, support the platform, hey, there the cash app is. Feel free to support. We try and take it to a new level. And I appreciate everybody who supported so far. Lori, Jay Walker, uh, Jackie, Poindexter, I mean, Jacqueline Poindexter. I mean, all of you all. Uh, Raymond, Rayfield Evans, all of you all who that support financially. I appreciate you. Uh, I do. And if those of you all who want to support, hey, five, ten, fifteen dollars, all those things, they help. And oh yeah, and I forgot. No, I got a surprise. I'm going to save that surprise for next week. I got to save that surprise. But once the music comes in one more time, and I'm oh, going to read this comment before I leave. I'm working on it now. The dream, though, that's my dream. Now, are you still there, girl? You know, you call every night. I'm used to you calling in. I ain't hear you calling in and talk to me tonight. But James Kirkland. No, y'all looking for a red flag. Nope. Not over here, though. <laughs> I ain't put my overlay up tonight. There it is. The intellectual stoop. James Kirkland. 
live shows Mondays at 9 p.m. You can follow and subscribe at James H. Kirkland the second. Y'all like my commercial? Yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. All right, so I'm out. It's been real. It's, you want to call in now? Hey, I'll take a phone call. You got If you got something to say, call. I'll, I'll take it. Let me turn the music off. I ain't got nothing to do. I'm off tomorrow. And I, ain't, I don't think I'm working this week. Don't call me, James, tonight. I will call you tomorrow if I want to. I will call. I'm going to call you tomorrow. Oh, not tonight. Okay, you got baby. I ain't calling tonight. I'll call you tomorrow, though. You, if you're going to call, you better call Netta because uh, um, <laughs> I ain't tired. I'm crunk. Is that the bishop? Bishop, I'll see you Sunday. I got to go to the church that I, I organized a long time ago. Let me see if she really gonna call. She said, "Let me call." If you call, you gonna you get to talk whatever you want to talk about. But if she don't call, I'm gonna count. I'm gonna count down. I'm counting my head. Are you calling for real? Call. Let's do it. Tell us what we are gonna have. Uh, call in and let us know what what kind of. And do not overdo it, Netta. They only buying general admission tickets. Don't be trying. Y'all should have saw the food Netta was trying to give y'all for general admission tickets. That would have been more than Golden Corral and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm like, don't do all. Don't be giving them folk all that. Yeah, I say I'm tr- I'm dry hating. I am. If she want to talk, we can talk. Y'all leave me. What you mean? Where's she going? I'm the one. It's eleven o'clock here. Leave her alone. But she ain't calling no way unless she's trying to figure out what the phone. Number. The phone. Number, oh, four oh four. Oh yeah, that's look. I, you see my mind. Four oh four eight six zero two seven seven five four zero four eight six zero. I'm putting it up two seven seven five. I like talking to Netta. Netta calling. She be right. Be real with me. If somebody else need me to show them how to how to buy tickets again, I'll show y'all that as well. But there it is. Lakeisha did an excellent job uh, making the tickets available to you all. And I want to continue this conversation about men feeling respected and women needing to feel to be safe. We're going to do that again probably some next week. Let's see what Netta want to talk about, and then we're going to get out of here. I'm going to get a benediction and say, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent. In just a moment, once we once uh, I let Netta call in and give us the menu and talk about whatever she wants. The mic is open for a minute or two. I got 14 more minutes and then I can I'm definitely going to bed because I got some things I need to do, like pull the covers back and get under the cover, get under them. That a number is Netta. What you waiting on, shawty? That's how we say it in Atlanta. I picked it up. Shawty. S-H-A-W-T-Y. Shawty. Do I say it right? I got to start working on my ATL uh, lingo. So in a few uh, few months, when we come to when we do our first podcast in Atlanta, we'll be ready because we're gonna take it. We're gonna take it across the world, especially when this next phase. Netta, is you calling? She ain't calling, Kiki. Ain't that your friend? Let's see, though. I guess she had to get pretty. I guess she had to get pretty for the. I'm joking. How you get on the phone, Netta? Don't get don't cuss me out for getting smart with you on the phone when I get on. Okay. She laughing, y'all. So I'm okay. You're not gonna play me now. I wanna play now. Hold on. I wanna play How now. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm talk to good. her. What you want to tell How's us tonight? It? Since you said you were calling. Okay, so you wanted me to call in and talk to you about this me. Talk to us. <laughs> talk to us. <laughs> that you done t- fussed at me about um team times and I'm still not doing yeah. She's still not listening. Oh, my God. Here we go. Come on. Here you go. Like I told you, as a caterer, <laughs> we got, you know, you got to give the people their money's worth. <laughs> that what I gave you is a general party menu. Standard food for a party. The fruit tray, the meatballs, the pasta salad, um, the turkey sliders, you know. Things like that. That's that's typical party food. That's a general menu for a party. Do y'all hear this? <laughs> it's more than that. Do y'all hear this? Now, y'all ain't paying but fifteen freaking dollars for a general admission ticket while it's on the early bird special. And I'm probably gonna leave it early bird. I ain't just be lying because I've been so blessed. Well, I'm, I'll make that decision in the next week or so. But uh, do y'all hear this woman that said meatballs, fruit trays, uh, turkey sliders? What else you say? I'm going back to it. Hold on. What I sent you. She actually wrote the thing. That, no, you're not doing the taco trade. Taco, what you call Taco. Oh, yeah. I said a taco bar. 
She's talking about that taco was, yeah. bar, all that. Yeah, somebody should just come just for the for the food. But you're gonna also. Get I mean, what you giving them their money for? They are. You are. You are. You are. But uh, we kind of we gotta have VIP difference. So you're gonna make us have to do filet mignon yeah. for VIP though. So now we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna modify it a little no. bit. <laughs> but just okay. a little bit, just a little bit. But we'll we'll talk though. Okay. So y'all hear what Netta's okay. saying? This is for the general admission yeah. people. And That's for those who are watching live and those that are going to watch the replay, yeah. May the 4th, come out, be prepared to have a good grown folk time because we, we we don't do, we do it grown folk style. <laughs> yeah. Just be prepared, May the 4th, to come out, have a good grown folk type of time. Yeah. And indulge in some good grown folk conversation. Absolutely. And there is a point and we're gonna we're gonna harness we're gonna harness this a little bit better this time. But there is a point where the conversation really goes to the audience. You know, we have a you know, it does. It, and it gets you know it gets really intense. You know, but we're gonna kind of control mm -hmm. that a little bit better because I want to get the audience's faces on on camera. I want them. You know, I want to hear what they're saying. I want people. And I want to record what they're saying. Last time we just kind of started speaking out of turn and things of that nature. And we right. kind of lost it, but but we'll have more room to do what we need to do this time. Uh, so, and I think everyone was just so involved in the dialogue and the, you know, phenomenal way that things were being said. You know, not di being disrespectful to one, and you know, the dialogue in itself, the first go round was just, like I said, so phenomenal. Everybody got caught up in the moment, in the moment of everything that was being, tra you know, put out there. It was, it was, and Tony Pearson. TP Tony Pierce, he was on here earlier. He was our certified, I'm got ice in my mouth. Uh, he was our certified mixologist. And right. he made sure he had roses for all the ladies. Uh, he made yeah. colorful drinks. I mean, different colors and layers and everything else. And he he he's lethal. <laughs> I guess all I can say about that, yeah. he's lethal with it. You know what I'm saying? He ought to be. Because yep. he may be that you know that lemon drop, and I was like, "Good lord!" <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he, 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 yeah, he's 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 lethal and he's vindictive. So he started he started going back in my childhood on me. So yeah, yeah, y'all got to be careful with Tony. But no, Tony's a certified mixologist, and he and, and he 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 heightens the atmosphere, you know. And that's what he I does. want. I want the atmosphere right, you know. And that's why I want the food. Uh, we're gonna open up for a few vendors. If a few vent four or five vendors want to come in. Uh, uh, we don't need. I mean, we don't need them. But if you want to come and get some more exposure, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean y'all don't realize how blessed we are in this instance. How many people have come alongside us to help us and donate their services and donate, you know, in kind donations and things of that nature, man. And I mean, it 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 literally almost moves me to tears. I mean, actually, it makes me just say, "Wow." It really does. And I know it's nothing that God can't do because I've seen Him do so much. Right. But the things that I've seen done already around the bonding of the sexes and the intellectual stew podcast, especially from people in Little Rock, people are like, why you go to Little Rock? We got more followers in Little Rock and like mm -hmm. Little Rock, and that's home. So I'll go home first, you know, and and then I would rather rather see home in a better state, you know, than anywhere else. You know, Nehemiah mm -hmm. had a Nehemiah wasn't was over it was serving it in, in the in the palace under a whole different king, but he had a passion and a longing for the people at home. And he wanted to go back home to build the wall. He didn't do build a wall where he was. And uh and eventually, you know, you just just never know. And so that Little Rock is gonna always be home. Arkansas is gonna always be home for me. And so uh that's why we'll be. And and I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it as a money grab. I'm not doing it as a for the likes and for the clicks. I'm doing it to get this message out. And to let people know that we can have productive relationship. We can't we let people know that we don't have to fall for all of the Internet bull stuff that's out there that's promoting these mm -hmm. divisive messages because they are promoting divisive messages. And it has us mm -hmm. in a situation where we're fighting against somebody that we should be loving. And that's the problem. Exactly. That's the problem. I'm you know, and I, I was I was having a conversation with somebody today. We were talking about the divorce rate. And, you know, it's like. Every time you turn around, somebody you know, you know, they ain't been so and so ain't been married that long, and they already getting a divorce, or so and so been married all the time, and they getting a divorce. You know, it all goes back to what your platform is about: healthy relationships. 
And, and why don't we have more platforms like this? Because it's conversations that some people are not ready to have or they don't want to have. But I welcome those conversations as a single female. It, like I said, with the married couple that was at the first one, it it, it enlightened me so much to just hear their story. Yeah, yeah I was sitting next to Kenny, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> you know, it was it was their story is just amazing. <laughs> and what's so funny is that people don't know it, but Kiki, I mean. Uh, Netta and I, we met that night. Yeah, we had we had never met prior to that, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, and because we uh, we because we had never uh, the uh, because we had never met before, you know, we didn't have she didn't have any expectations as it relates mm -hmm. to what was going to go down that night. She had no expectations at all. But uh, but she, I I walked in the door just coming in. To bring the backdrop, and because of my my sister, my bestie, you know, was like, "Well, our cousin is doing this podcast. We need a a backdrop, you know." And I had no expect no expectations on what to expect. And I, you know, and I I'm a firm believer that God puts people in your life for a reason. <laughs> and the people that's on the dream team, that's what I call it. Everybody that's on the dream team just worked in jails together like we've been knowing each other for decades. Pretty much. And uh, and don't and have no questions at all. I mean, it just I mean no. I mean, it's crazy. Kawana, I mean, I mean, don't leave yeah. her out. You know, Kawana because she helped with the de uh, decorations and whatnot, you know, and she Yeah, that's what I say. You yeah. know, everybody that worked from that very first one just jail together like it was, you know, I, I, the night before, you know, me and Kiki was talking about, okay, what need to be done? Where do we need, what do I need to help you do? You know, I know the backdrop's done. What else do I need to help to get the, <laughs> so, you know, even the day of, I was out at Walmart picking up drinks and, you know, but that's part of being a team. Yeah. I'm going to play this one clip from from uh, that night, and then we're going to get off here for real. But hold on. Let me play this real clip. Real quick. Uh, and that's the problem okay. we have in relationships because a lot of us, I'm going to say it, but we go in expecting to fail. That's why we sign prenups. That's why we get. We already know we, go, we figured we're going to get a divorce. Back in the day, it didn't work like that. We didn't act like that. Now we, but now we go in with the, expects, with the insurance in place that if it fails, I got a plan. Right. What if you said my only plan is to succeed? Because it sounds like what, what Rod said a minute ago, she said, when I went in, I knew this was my person. So whatever happens that, that messes up my person, Corey has a very, very interesting perspective on cheating. All right. Now, that perspective was kind of, you know, uh, <laughs> that was interesting, and, okay. but it got us a whole different conversation started, you know. So, right. uh, yeah, but those are the kind of conversations we had that night. And, uh, and we're going to have mm -hmm. more like that on may 4th so i'm looking forward to it and it's still you know even after the panel and all that was was said we were still talking about it even after when we were cleaning up we were still talking about it yeah it so was... that just shows the impact that that whole it had yeah it did it did and uh, it, 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 it 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 exceeded all of my expectations uh, I'm not gonna yes. say it met my expectation. It exceeded them, and I'm excited. About and I that. didn't have none, and I, my, I was just mind blown yeah. because those are conversations we don't have every day. Yeah, well, we're gonna have, we're gonna, as long as you're around me, we're gonna keep having them. So <laughs> let's do it. Well, it's 10:58. We've been on for right at two hours almost, and it has been fun. Oh, we talked about it tonight. She wants to feel safe, and he just wants to be respected. Let's make it happen. You respect him. He'll make you feel safe. You make it, her feel safe. She'll respect you. However it happens. Just make it happen. Let's be mature. You know what, Net, Netta? Don't nobody uh, even have to go first. We can just go at the same time. Okay. That's the easy way to do it, ain't it? You, you, feel, I, you, feel, you respect me. I make you feel safe. Winning. Nobody got to go first. We're doing it at the same time. That's cool. You know, my thing have always been when you walk into it, you walk into it with this, you know, we walk into it with respect for each other. Yeah. You know, trust it just as much as trust is given. Trust has to be earned. Absolutely. All right. On that note, the world is changing. 
my question for you is why do you remain the same y'all have a good night and i'm out Intellectual